Kristen and I am with Lift Leadership and today we're here with Gail who's the CEO and our special guest is Pam Evans and um, looks like somebody just joined us. Hi Paula. Um, if you wouldn't mind muting that would be great that way we can just think. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so Pam is our special guest today and she is an author and a relationship strategist. And her goal is, you know, based on her life experience, she's learned a lot um, from relationships and has a lot of wisdom to share. And her, you know, ultimately she is, um, wants to help people avoid some of the common pitfalls and mistakes that she's made. And so we've asked her to come here today and talk about relationships and kind of this interesting time that we're in now where we are all, you know, 24 seven, in a you know in a space with people you know with our loved ones or with you know people that we live with and that could be a challenging time for some people so pam welcome thank you so much for joining us and i'll thank let you, you for, take it away <laughs> thank you for having me it's great to be connected to everyone and speaking of loved ones i see my husband jumped on so I have, i'm gonna yeah. have to be careful about what we talk about here. <laughs> there you go <laughs> you know it's interesting. I guess I could ask the question, who doesn't like to talk about relationships? In good times, bad times, it seems like we take ourselves wherever we go and the relationships kind of come along with us. So um, I tend to focus a lot on couples relationships, but, but because we're in this confinement situation, it affects other people. Children, maybe siblings living with us, an elderly parent, maybe a roommate. You just never know. So we can go all over the map if you like to, but I'll begin by saying, I think we are going through phases here with the coronavirus situation in terms of confinement. Three, four, six weeks ago, and some of us have been confined for about six weeks, depending on what region you're in. I think we're in a state of shock and maybe a little bit in a, in a situation of denial. Is this really happening? Is this really gonna be a big deal? Is it gonna take very long? Um, but I think we're through that phase. I mean, there could have been a little anger there too. Like, why is this happening to me? What have we done? But now I think like in the stages of grief, we've moved into a new phase. And I think it's the acceptance and adjustment phase. And maybe we're moving into the phase of finding meaning in all of this because there is a lot of uncertainty and there's going to be a lot of uncertainty. Our lives will be altered for good, bad, better, whatever. And, and I think we have to just accept that within ourselves as individuals so our relationships with others will be better. And I think going into COVID-19, you have to look at, let's say, three different types of relationships. I put labels on them just for fun. But let's say you're in a green light relationship. Everybody has jobs, income flowing in, everybody's in good health, everybody's happy, well-functioning family, couple whatever. Well, you might think that's just going to bump along that way, but it may not. You need to nurture it right now and you need to be extra sensitive or that beautiful green light relationship could be a new partnership of some kind can go south pretty easily. Secondly, and I think this may be where most people are, and I can tell you I've been in all of these relationship shifts. I happen to be green lighted right now. We're going to keep it that way. But yellow light relationships, these are where there are some issues and they may not have been addressed. Uh, the relationship is together, but is it really together? I call these hope relationships. H stands for, and I came up with this myself, I thought it was kind of clever. H stands for head in the sand. The issues are there, but nobody really wants to recognize them and address them. O stands for observe. Yeah, they're there, but take no action. P, that's an easy one. Point the finger, it's the other partner's problem. It's really not mine. And E, I could not find a word that would come up that would give me the E definition other than escape or exit. If things don't go well enough, if things don't improve, I'm out of here. 
And I don't know about you, but I've done that more times than once. And I vowed to myself, I would never just be out of here when I'm in a yellow light situation. And then there are the red light relationships. I didn't say red light district, but red light relationships <laughs> where there's a lot of dysfunction. It's not healthy. And in some cases, people have already decided that they're going to part. But the wall came down too quickly before they could rent a new place, before they could talk to an attorney. I don't even know if lawyers' offices are open right now. I don't know if you can rent a place right now. So you're stuck. And the only option is surviving that relationship. Now, obviously, if there's serious emotional abuse or any emotional abuse, physical abuse, you put on your mask and gloves and you go somewhere else. You go to a family member, they will take you in. You go to a friend, they will take you in. You go to the authorities if you have to. But I'm talking about relationships that are just really unhappy. And the couple, uh, the partners have decided we're going to call it quits when we can. So in those relationships, you've got to have some place of peace and calm. And that means a little bit of respect, even if you really don't like each other and you don't agree. And you've got to set boundaries. And if that's, I stay in this part of the house or the apartment, you stay in this part, we eat separately, or we stay apart all day, but we eat together, but we don't talk. But you've got to set up some ground rules, I think, for that relationship, that type of relationship. And I think going back to yellow and green, you've got to do the same thing. You have to have an understanding of how you're going to navigate. I don't know about you, but in the first two weeks of this shelter in place, I did not have a schedule. Uh, we, I ate at different times. Uh, mostly we ate together, but not always. I would do a project and stop and get up and go do laundry. I was really helter skelter because I couldn't focus because I, I didn't know what to make of this whole thing. But now I have found myself and my husband and I are into this. So we live in North Carolina. Uh, we're into it in about four, four weeks now. And I would say we do have a schedule and it's an unspoken schedule, but it seems to be working well for us. So, so I'll leave it at that. I don't believe there should be rules around relationships, really. And what I want to do is give some suggestions that may or may not work for you. And I will say there are some fantastic articles out there about how to communicate, how to make things better in the worst of times. And I truly believe no matter what situation you're in, it's up to you as an individual to do what you can to make things better for you and to make things better for whomever you're living with. But I would say suggestion number one, and, and please interrupt me, uh, send questions on chat, raise your hand if, if any of this aligns with your thinking or resonates with you in any way. But I would say the first suggestion is seek to understand. This is a time, because we are in solitude for the most part, to find out about yourself, do a little bit of self-discovery, a little bit of self-examination. Before all this, we lived in the external world. I was running and doing errands on weekends, uh, you know, getting a little bit of exercise, not that much, doing my work, doing my cooking. We were, you know, we had this external world of activity. And I didn't spend enough time really reflecting on the recent past or the past past or really thinking about my own personality traits and how they play into relationships. I actually did study this when I wrote my book, and it was an, an aha moment for me because I had been making the same relationship mistakes over and over and over again. And it was my own personality traits that led me in the direction I always went to, albeit with a different partner, but I was taking myself wherever I went. So I think this is a good time to do by yourself and even with your partner, anybody in your household, a personality assessment of some kind. I know Gail supports one. There, there are many that you can do. But if you can find out the pros and the cons, the positives and the negatives of your own personality, uh, then you can navigate the relationship better. And if you know the personality and understand the personality of the person with whom you're living, that's ever uh, so helpful. Um, you know, I, I found that my part, this partner, my partner, we've been married six years now. We 
we uh, dated for many, so I would say I road tested this relationship to make sure it would have legs, it would work. But he's sort of a peacemaker type, and I sort of am needy. So I'm aware of the fact that I need to be a little more self-reliant, a little bit more independent, um, a little less critical. I'm looking at the negatives in my personality to make sure that they don't flow into our day-to-day -day when we're around each other all the time. So nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. Uh, my partner's not perfect. I, he's also my husband. But um, I think knowing your personality type is going to be fun and helpful. And it's an exercise you can do together. Yeah, one of the things I, I did do, because um, I know that you, you um, I've done the Enneagram and I've also done DISC, which is the one that Lyft we focus on, but they're fundamentally the same kind of same things. And it was very interesting to me because I discovered that my husband talks to think and I think before I talk. And for me, that's been very helpful because I find, you know, it's like he can go on and on and on about stuff. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, could you stop talking, right? And then I'll sit there and I won't say anything. And he's like, oh my goodness, could you say something? And knowing that he's processing thing in something in one way and I'm doing it in another is helpful because otherwise you just get it's kind of like you're ignoring me because you're not saying anything or could just stop talking and let me talk kind of a thing. So yeah, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, and it, it sort of dovetails into the whole self-awareness and awareness of the people around you and understanding their behaviors and actions and yours right. and how they intermingle or don't as the case may be. Right. Uh, I know one day, you know, my husband found out that his uh, partner in business his partner's mother had passed away of COVID-19 in another country. And that was a day when my husband was slightly down, I would say. Uh, so I wasn't running around the house cracking a lot of jokes and I was giving him a little bit of space. I think just being aware that people are going to have different times during the day and over the weeks and months where they're not aligned with you, with you and right. the way you're feeling and the way you're thinking so just being sensitive to that is right. going to help in the long run. Right. Yeah. And um, this, is, this is kind of a funny one. Uh, well, there are a couple of funny ones. Share and exchange. You know, everything you read is communicate, over communicate during this time. And I, I think that's really good. I think it's good to share your schedules, your thoughts, uh, you know, how you're interacting with others, uh, your needs, your desires, what have you. But there was one thing I just really didn't want to share with my husband, but, but because we're both home and he sees when the UPS and the Postal Service arrive, I can't hide much of anything. So I had to come clean and tell him I had spent close to $100 on buying toilet paper on the internet. I got scammed twice in one day. And uh, I wasn't very proud about that. But we have toilet paper, let's put it that way. But it was kind of one of those things. I ended up sharing it and he was like, how, how could you spend that kind of money? I, was, I don't know what I was thinking. But we had a good chuckle about it. So I do share everything and that's kind of taken the edge off yeah. of some of the mistakes I make. Yeah. I read something, um, I follow the Gottman Institute, and I know you and I have talked about them before, and John and Julie Gottman, who are, um, he's a researcher and she's a, a therapist, and they've done a lot of work around relationships, and he, he has like a 85% uh, chance of predicting whether a relationship will succeed or fail talking to a couple for what, like 15 minutes or something like that. I mean, it's crazy based on all this uh, research that he's done. But I saw a post on Instagram yesterday and they were talking about end of day conversations. And they always kind of talk about that where you come together and the whole point is you've been gone and separated and you're coming back and how was your day? How was your day? This, that, best thing, worst thing, whatever. But they were saying right now that you should still do that and um, how important it is and give each person like 15 minutes to just to vent and you give them your undivided attention and that helps them kind of get all the stress and the anxiety and the worries and the this and the that and then you do the same and not 
not with trying to solve anything, but just being somebody that they can listen to. And I think right now for me, that, that really makes a lot of sense that resonates because all through the day, there's all sorts of pressures that are building up. You know, it depends on how much media you're taking in or, you know, whether you're working or not working or kids or whatever it is. Um, and that one of the things, and I think I have a challenge with this that I need to work on is that they're talking about even if you support your partner, even if your their perspective seems completely unreasonable to you. Um, how, like, I know I have a hard time with that. <laughs> So how do you, I mean, is it just, yep, I understand, I hear what you're saying, I, I get it, and just let it go with that? I mean, even if it's completely, I don't know, off the wall or whatever. Well, you know, John Gray has written a couple of books. Uh, his most recent one was when Mars and Venus collide, and not really to get into the gender thing, right. but he did say that, you know, women often take on a lot of extra responsibility with the family and the, the and being out in the workforce and so forth. And they often like to come home and just sort of get it out. Whereas sometimes men are more, hmm, take it in, uh, go into the cave, have solitude at the end of the day. And so what people should do is before you start to vent, um, the other party should say, okay, what role would you like me to play? Would you like me to just listen to you? Are you looking for advice? Or do you want us to problem solve this thing together? You mm -hmm. tell me what role you want me to play, and then I think it's going to go better. And so that's sort of the way we work it here, too, uh, because sometimes I don't necessarily want an opinion. I just want to be heard. And I think, you know, don't don't necessarily set ground rules, but just so, sort of put it out there. How do you want me to handle this? And, and I'll be there for you. I love you. I'm going to be supportive emotionally, but tell me how I can help you. Right. Or if not, if you just want me to listen, uh, that's fine. So Pam, we have something in our house that we use. Um, when you just need to air things out and you don't necessarily want somebody else to solve your problems, we say, I need to talk to Clarity about this. That's good. I like it's that. Automatic thing that the other person knows they're not supposed to solve the issue for us. They're just letting us listen. We're just talking to clarity. Wow, that's good. So you just practice being wallpaper. Yep. I think we should do more of that. <laughs> without without being a doormat, we should do more of that. That kind of leads me into the other suggestion is don't be the first responder. And I, I, I say that tongue in cheek, but so often someone will say something that sounds abrupt to us and we feel like we have to come back with a retort. And um, a situation again, uh, my husband and I had the other day, he wanted my input on something he was ordering on Amazon. Sounds like we do a lot of ordering here <laughs> on the internet. And uh, it was something I wasn't particularly interested in. I think it was a garden hose or something like that. So I walked in with my, um, my smartphone and I started texting somebody. I mean, a text came into me, so I wanted to answer it right away. And I'm looking down and he said, you're not listening, are you? And I, I just kind of blew that off. Then he said, you're not listening. And I blew that off. <laughs> and then he says, I can't believe how rude you're being. Now, I could have come back and said, I wasn't being rude. I was just texting so-and-so. But in my heart of hearts, I knew I was being rude, so I kept my mouth shut. I was rude. So I started paying attention. And so we, we made the transaction, whatever it was. And then afterwards, we laughed about it because I did say, hey, yeah, I, I'm really sorry about that. I, I, was, <laughs> I was paying attention. I'm glad we got through this. And we both had a good laugh. But I didn't have to respond. He, he was right in that instance. Just pay attention. <laughs> Put your eyeballs on the computer. <laughs> so, uh, so the first responder is a good one. You know, I think this is also uh, a good time to strategize about the future. If you and your partner or family had been talking about downsizing or getting control of your finances, why not do it now? And you definitely have a lot of time to focus and to be together. And when we come out of this thing, uh, things can be different. Things will be different. And if you 
had thought about something but had never really planned for it, now's the time to do it. Maybe if it is a vacation, but maybe if it's something more serious than that, that you really should have been paying attention to. Maybe you haven't done your estate planning yet, uh, or it needs to be revised. Uh, this is a good time to strategize about the future. What if one of your partners is not happy with the career they're in right now? Now is probably not a good time to make that change. Again, you know, who knows who's hiring, but you could start uh, talking about what that would look like if one of you made a career change or if what a, one of you does not go back to work. So I think strategizing about the future, I think we don't do enough strat. We strategize at work, but we don't strategize in our relationships in our every day. And, you know, some people get lucky with love and relationships, but luck isn't a strategy. And I think the more that you can collaborate together on uh, the serious things that happen in life and, and have the hypothetical conversations, what would, would we do if, what would we do if one of us uh, does lose our job? What do we do if my mother has to move in with us or needs to move in with us? What will we do if a sibling needs some help and I have to go to another state and, and hang out with my sibling and help them out? How are we going to handle all of this? This is a good time to talk about the future. I don't know if anybody else is thinking that way. Uh, we don't have a crystal ball about what's going to happen in the future, but uh, do the hypo have the hypothetical conversations anyway. Yeah, well, and I think a lot of this stuff too, it's if you don't think about some of these things, they're potentially going to happen and then you're caught flat-footed and then you don't know what to do and you're reacting in a place of, you know, stress or anxiety or uncertainty or whatever. And we're already kind of in that place, but maybe, you know, so maybe you can help alleviate by pre-planning or getting some ideas down about, oh, if this were to happen, what, you know, what would you do, right? Like, I think there's, that is a good idea, you know, and I'm a planner, but there's always things that happen that, you know, you are caught flat-footed because you think maybe you have time to plan for this. Oh, I've got 10 years or 20 years before this possibly happens. And, you know, sometimes that's just not true. So thinking in advance through some of that stuff, you know, could be very helpful. Nice. You know, I advise couples to do this, this long before COVID-19, in the serious dating phase of your relationship, where you're starting to become committed to one another, have these, uh, have these types of conversations. People don't often have the deep conversations at that time because they don't want to scare somebody off. Right. Uh, or it's not fun. We just want to have fun together. But it's really important to say, if I were to get a job transfer to Dallas, would you leave California and come with me? These are quite, these things happen. And, or I'm really serious about having children. Is, is this something I have to convince you about? Or is this something that you're open and really interested in doing with me? If, if we take this relationship further, having these kinds, what would you do if I had a health crisis? But you don't have to be old to have a health crisis. Uh, have these conversations early. And if you are not aligned in your values and you're thinking around the things that are important to you, then maybe you need to go to the exit door sooner than later. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you're, if your dream is to live abroad and you are getting really serious with someone who says, I am never leaving this community. My family's here. My life is here. I would never even consider it. And your dream is, I'm, I'm going to go live somewhere else at some point, or I'm going to go around the world, you know, and live for two years, you know, hiking. Uh, if that's your dream, but not a dream that can be shared by a partner or supported by a partner, then you need to know that early on. So again, it doesn't take the situation we're in to have these deep conversations, these meaningful conversations, but it's never too late. Yeah. Never too late. Um, I think, you know, just going back to empathy, kindness, compassion, I think no matter what happens, we ought to commit to ourselves and uh, to coming out of this better human beings, more observant, 
more patience, more patient, uh, more kind, not just to the people under our roof, but the people to who, with whom we're going to come in contact out there when we are able to have closer encounters. And this is the time, I think, to really reflect on who we are as people, why we're in these relationships, how we can make our relationship with ourselves stronger so we can make the relationship with our partner stronger. That's kind of where I want to go with this. I mean, we're always a work in progress. We're evol I'm not the same person I was five years ago. We're always evolving. We can always learn. And I know a lot of people are taking this time to learn. They're being really creative. They're in a relationship. You could do this webinar together. Obviously, we're, <laughs> we're doing that. Uh, but you can take courses together. You can uh, talk about passions and interests that you can do together. And you can support your partner in one that he or she might wanting to, uh, you know, take up. So I think just using this time of solitude to get the wheels going to be creative. How can I be more productive when we come out of this? How can I volunteer more? I think that's something that if we take our focus off ourselves and put it on others, then I think we're all going to be well served. Uh, so there are a lot of things that you can do. You can talk to yourself about being a better self and you can share that with your partner and together keep evolving, keep growing. Cause even though we feel like we're standing in place in this confinement situation, we are not. And trust me, we're all thinking differently. We have altered states of mind than we did four, six weeks ago. So, uh, I mean, these, these are just some thoughts. There are many, many others about, you know, discussing roles and responsibilities, taking on a role you don't usually take on. Uh, again, you know, practicing patience, um, finding the time for solitude. Solitude is not loneliness. Right. Solitude is important. And I don't think a lot of us really thought about that until now. Um, and it, it is really important to use that time to do the self-reflection, to plan for the future, to learn, to become a better human being. So you can have better relationships. That's kind of my message to everyone is that this is our time to be better human beings. Um, I always wanted to be, you know, everybody wants to be a big career success, you know, financial success or whatever. I wanna come out of this world a human success. Yeah. That's and I think that's what COVID nineteen the situation is causing us to think about how can we be better humans? We are all the same on this planet. We're all vulnerable to illness and disease and we all will die. And so it's really important to take this time to say what can we do to make this planet a happier, better, more natural place less pollution that, that's happening these days, what can we do? And, and if we think about what we can do and what others can do and what we can do collectively, I mean, human beings are very powerful and our relationships can be stronger and better than ever. So Pam, when I work with individuals, one of the things that I do in my coaching sessions, is I, as I tell them, at the end of your life, your life will be summed up in one sentence. What do you want that sentence to be? Pick it now and every day should be how you live that. Mm -hmm. And when you think about what is my one sentence, what is my one purpose for being here? Um, it, it really does help. Would now be a good time to open up to anybody who might have questions? Absolutely, yes. Make sure and unmute yourself guys, otherwise we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> or to share a story or an example or anything that's on your mind. And I just wanted to let everybody know I'm happy to have free consultations with you over Zoom, Skype, email, whatever. If you need somebody objective to talk with who's not a family member or a partner, I'm, I'm here for you because I, I can guarantee you I've walked in your shoes. I've taken the road less traveled and... Um, I've, I've survived. So hopefully my practical lessons and tips can be of help, help to you. 
And we do offer, uh, for couples, we do offer, uh, I, it's my way of giving back, free assessments for couples. So I've done a lot of people, we don't do counseling, that's not what we do, but we will do the free DISC assessment and talk about how you differ in communication and um, what's the best way to communicate with each other, what some natural tendencies are. So if you are interested in that, reach out to me at Lyft. But is there... Questions. It usually takes a minute for somebody to, to pop in with a question. And if you want to put it in the chat too, you can do that and we can read it. Um, one of the things that I noticed today, I was watching my you know 10 minutes of news that I allow myself during the day so I don't get too overwhelmed by that. But um, in the crawler underneath, they there was something that, and it wasn't attributed to anybody but it said something to the effect of um, divorces are expected, the divorce rate is expected to rise as a result of this. Um, I mean, I can kind of see where that would come from. And you're talking about the, you know, people either in a yellow or a, you know, red uh, relationship status and how the stress and the strain of being confined 24 seven could potentially lead to that. Um, so, oh, sorry. <laughs> so Pam, I know during a time of a crisis like this, it's high anxiety levels. I mean, and there's nothing that causes people more anxiety than trying to control something they can't control. And we're living within that every single day, every minute of every day right now, because we have no control over what's going to happen. We don't have control over when we're going to be able to go back to work or if we're going to be able to get toilet paper. Um, so what are some things that we can do in the house to help when our anxiety gets high? Because that's when, when we get anxious, a lot of times that it plays out in the relationship. What would you suggest for people? I have a couple, but I'd like to he hear a, a couple of things that you might suggest just to help with that anxiety. So whatever it takes to help you ground yourself, if it's music, if it's reading, if it's taking a walk alone uh, outside the house, uh, if it's um, starting to think about that creative new project that you never started before, uh, meditation, if, if that helps you, uh, exercise at home, yoga, uh, there are many different ways and, you know, there are lots of creative things that you can learn on YouTube these days too, that will help you ground yourself as well. But just knowing that you're not alone in anxiety, even the most calm people are, uh, you know, have anxiety from time to time over this because there is so much uncertainty. And everybody likes to have a little control over their lives, their future. So it is normal to have anxiety. It's absolutely normal and it's going to ebb and flow and whatever it takes for you to just breathe. If that's just sitting and watching a Netflix all afternoon and if you're working remotely, you just tell your boss, I am going to be away from the computer for the next two hours and you don't even have to give a reason. They under, most understand these days or at least mine does because I'm working remotely. So do what it takes to make you feel good about you and to, to keep the calm going. <laughs> keep it calm. Get lots of sleep too. Yeah. Nourishment and lots of rest. I feel the, now I'm not waking up to an alarm clock. Yeah. So that's been great for, for me. And, and nourishment, the right nourishment, not the sugar, because that's going to do all kinds of things to your moods on top of it. But the one thing that I, as I've been working with people, I tell them that this is a time of one or two things that's going to happen you, to you. You're gonna, it's gonna be a time of distraction. You're gonna get all wrapped up in the coronavirus and you're gonna get completely distracted from uh, what's going on or what you could be doing or how you could be doing it. But to take, instead of becoming distraction, distracted, use that time for traction and list those things that you say you never have time to do and get them done, if at all possible. Work ahead. Um, I mean, my goodness, there's projects around the house that I had been putting off for six months, but um, you know, get up and still have your list of to-do things 
um, so that you gain traction during this time instead of being distracted on something you can't control. So true. And now we're having to take on new responsibilities for our well-being that we used to pay services for, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had to color and cut my own hair. I hadn't done that in a while. And uh, I asked my husband how it turned out. He said, I don't see any difference. So I guess you did okay. So <laughs> I'll keep doing it. But uh, I don't know. That was a little bit of uh, private time for myself. I just uh, something I, I did one day. And Yeah, for me, I think, you know, my husband and I have separate offices. And we used to, prior to when we moved, we worked in the same office, which was okay most of the time. Um, but I would say that it's better for us now that we can kind of go to our separate spaces. Um, and I know some people live in really tight quarters. We were having a, a Zoom social last night with some friends and one of them is a young couple with a two-year-old daughter and the wife was saying this should be considered you know in an apartment this small with a child this young it should you know it's cruel and unusual punishment um because you know it's they don't go anywhere she's trying to work and the baby's running all over the place and it's really hard and you know i think finding time where you can, I mean, even if it's 15 minutes every, you know, morning, noon, and night or whatever, to just be by yourself. I mean, that's such a, a precious gift that maybe we never noticed before because we were running around and, and you weren't allowed to kind of have that. But I think for sanity's sake these days and, and for yourself and your relationships, you have to do that. You have to find that time. I'm wondering how many of these new techniques will stick around after we do go back to connecting with people more or less like we did before. Yeah. It'll be a little bit different. But um, what are some of the, the new tasks and chores we've taken on ourselves that, um, that, that will stay with us? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so many times we get in situations like this and we're like, I can't wait for it to get back to normal. I just can't wait to get back to normal. Things will never be the normal that you knew before. And if you don't believe that, look at 9-11. I mean, we're still taking off our shoes and taking everything out and having to do different TSA things. So don't get so tied up. I can't wait to get back to normal as much as you're looking forward to the opportunity for the new adventures and and opportunities that are going to be opened up to you because you've learned a different way of doing things during this time it's a great time to actually just look forward with anticipation so true and also as we think about the future really stay in the present moment i mean every day i wake up and i say i'm alive and i'm healthy every single day and I, th I thank the powers that be. I'm still here. Uh, and so I, I try to live in the moment. And yes, every day can seem like the next day and the next day and the next day. I mean, are we still in March? <laughs> but it's a new day. It is a new day. And we're so fortunate to be here um, in whatever situation we're in. So and I think stay in the present moment, too. Yeah, I think going along with that, um, you and I have a mutual friend um, whose big focus is on gratitude. And I think that that's a huge thing that can really help you get through times like this. And it can help with your relationship. And again, going back to the whole Gottman thing, they say, what is it that you need? I mean, a feeling appreciated is a huge piece in having a green light relationship. I mean, knowing that somebody appreciates you for you, what you do, what you bring to the relationship, you know, be it work or, you know, security or, you know, all these different things. There's so many different layers to that. And I think now, you know, for a lot of people, I, you know, I, I don't keep a gratitude journal, but I do go around my day and go, oh, wow, I really appreciate that. I can go, like when I walk outside now and I, and the sun shining down on me is like, oh my gosh, it is just something that it is a whole new level of appreciation. Even though I appreciated it before, it's like a hundred times more now. 
And I think there are things that we can appreciate about what's happening through this, where, you know, and in our relationship. And we and sometimes you have to look for that. But I think once you start doing that and expressing that, that's something that's kind of like relationship fertilizer. It can really help, you know, help nurture and grow your relationship. You know, I appreciate you making me a cup of coffee. I appreciate the fact that you're here with me and we have each other during this time. Even though maybe, you know, we are in a situation where, you know, we were going to leave or whatever, but I appreciate that I am not all by myself, you know, if you can say that. There's so many different, and you might have to look because it's, it's a muscle that you have to kind of exercise if you're not used to that. And I have a, oh, sorry, Kristen. Oh, I have a great way to exercise that muscle. So I keep two notebooks with me. In fact, I have one right here. Oops, sorry, that was loud. I have one right here. Um, I have two of them. One of them is a gratitude and literally one line. When I'm grateful about something, I open it up and I write, I'm grateful that my son took out the trash or I'm grateful that, you know, he brought me lunch or whatever I'm grateful for. Because what I found with me is that uh, in my personality to sit down and just journal all at once seemed overwhelming to me. And then I had a million things. What I did is created a to-do list because I was my list was getting longer on the side. So being able to journal your gratitude, one line. The other one that has been extremely powerful is uh, writing forgiveness. Mm. So um, saying it out loud is one thing. Um, thinking it is another thing. But writing it is magical. Mm -hmm. And it's um, absolutely amazing to just say, I forgive that snide comment. Mm. I forgive my impatience. Because sometimes you're forgiving yourself. And you can just write it three or four times. And then something else will pop in your mind. And you'll write it. And you'll know when it's time to stop. So those are two very key things you can do as you're, you're um, cooped up. The other thing I wanted to share was when I worked the crisis line, so we, we would get calls and have to respond to crisis, the people in crisis, many times um, it was depression, somebody being depressed or suicidal calls. So one thing that we learned on the crisis line that, that can be implemented very, very easily for you at home is we all know when we start to fall into that funk, right? Where we know our mood's getting a little bit depressed and we're kind of getting in that funk. The, the, the two things you can do is drink a glass of orange juice. It's your fastest source of energy that actually will elevate your mood and go walk or do some type of physical activity for 20 minutes. The studies have shown that those make all kinds of difference in mood elevating without dropping your blood sugar later. So just some tips as you're, as you're moving forward being, uh, you know, cooped up inside of the house. That's really good advice. I drink orange juice and I walk, but not at the same time or not one right after the other. I'll give that a, give yep. that a try. That's great advice. Yep. We used to use it with patients or people that were calling in that were extremely depressed. And you get, as much as I hate to say it, you get repeat offenders on the line. And that's what we'd ask them to do is drink a glass of orange juice and go walk for 20 minutes and call us back. Um, and it was amazing. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I like the forgiveness journal. I think that's a good idea. And it, and it is true. I mean, I always think, ah, oh, what just happened? I don't know what just happened. For some reason, my whole screen went blank. Um, I think that we're so used to thinking, oh, I have to forgive other people. But we also have to forgive ourselves. And you said you've been saying kind of a short saying the past couple of weeks, which is um, space and grace. And I, I think that's true. And I think we need to give that to others and give that to ourselves too. And it's, you know, there's a lot happening right now. And maybe you are getting, you know, your um, your, what is it, fuse is a little shorter than normal or whatever. And, you know, I think we all have that. And so we need to step back and go, okay, I had a moment, take a deep breath. I forgive myself for that. I apologize to, you know, my partner or whoever. And, you know, and I think that goes a big way, a long way too, is saying, you know, I'm sorry. Like you were talking about earlier, I'm sorry I was rude. I should have been paying attention that, that I, I apologize for that. And that's a huge, I mean, for me, I know in past relationships, that was a thing. Like I never got, and I'm sorry for a lot of stuff. 
and having that is 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 really healing well yeah it, it goes back to acknowledge the situation accept and take responsibility and adjust yeah and then move on it's okay yeah yep. we're not perfect human beings i have many things i'm sorry for but i've acknowledged them and i've moved on so i don't dwell in the past i just want to learn the lessons right. from the past uh, misjudgments that's all we have to do forgive ourselves forgive others and learn the lessons um, and I think I've learned my lesson about buying toilet paper on the internet. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Does anybody else have one last question before we wrap up? Um, we, we promised we'd keep you a, a, not a huge amount of time. We want to make this fun. So you return. These are every week. Next week we have ten, Tim Enix that's going to be coming talking about uh, your purpose in life and how to live a purposeful life. So he's got, some things for us on that. So um, any other questions? I'll give it two couple of seconds. Um, how about some tips on people who live alone? Ooh. Ooh. Hey. Stephanie, why did I know that would come from you? <laughs> uh, so let me ask you a question. Do you have a pet? I do. I have a cat. Yeah. Pets are companions. They're mm -hmm. silent companions. Uh, but they, I don't know that they have emotions, but they have moods. I, they have feelings. Uh, I, I've been reading a lot where people who do live alone during this time are cuddling more with their pets, spending more time with their pets. And, uh, that is a saving grace. Also reaching out via text, phone, email, or whatever to other individuals, uh, friends of yours, family members, um, doing things that you can do alone that will put you also in the world of joy and fantasy. So watching things again on, on Netflix, on YouTube, reading, uh, your day will go by. Cooking, doing the things that you like to do alone. Because at the end of the day, we come into this world alone and we're going to go out that way too. And we have to be able to entertain ourselves and be emotionally secure and happy. And I'm sure you, you are, Stephanie, but it, with this time of confinement, it just exacerbates the fact that you are alone, but you're not. You're on this call today with all of us and doing things like participating in webinars where you're interacting with other people. Yeah, I have done a lot of those actually too. And it's um, another thing I've done too is actually contacted people I haven't spoken to in months and right. made phone calls, yeah. And people I haven't heard from in years have reached out to me, believe it or not. What's really frustrating for me is that we moved to North Carolina from California in January, and I'm 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and an hour, and another hour from siblings and a niece. And I can't, I haven't seen them in weeks. And I have oh, a 92-year-old 92, uh, 92 aunt uh, an hour and a half away, and I can't see her. And one of the reasons we moved was so we could be with my family and we could make some new friends and we've really done neither. <laughs> so no, it's frustrating, I, but, but we do the emails and the calls and the Zooms. Video and chats and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other thing that I think really helps us, especially when you live alone, my mother's going through that right now. She's soon to be 91 in one of those apartments and she's confined to her apartment. She doesn't even walk down to get her meals anymore and she's still very, very much with it. But she has some loss in eyesight, so watching TV is not easy for her or reading is not easy for her. Um, but um, what we have had to do with her and what we've helped her do is to create something she needs to do that day. Be it very, very small, but she has a list that she crosses off so that she feels She's productive. And one of the things that we encouraged her to do is to sit and figure out how she can help others. So um, focusing on helping other people has a whole different uh, reaction in our mind and the chemicals that are released than just thinking about ourselves. The other thing we've talked about Netflix, and don't get me wrong, there's nothing with Netflix, but, but if you sit all day and you watch TV all day, the studies show that the people who watch TV for hours upon end 
actually are mildly depressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine. So, so TV can be a great filler, but make sure it's filler. a filler. Yeah, yeah. Well, I find I also got back into things that I haven't had a chance to do either uh, due to the fact that uh, I do like to work and I'm still working, although, well, I'm furloughed at the moment, but um, I know the job is there when I come back. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm picking up things that I have left go for quite some time, and that feels good, too. Yeah. yeah, one of the things that I've been doing that I find is really helpful for me is I have Spotify, and I have some playlists that I really enjoy, and I found one um, that has a lot of, you know, 70s and 80s music that just brings me back to my childhood and makes me really happy. And so I'll put that on and I will blast that in my house and I will, you know, dance around the house. Order. And it's amazing how uplifting that is. That I find for me, that's incredibly helpful. Yeah, the yeah, BGs do it every time, don't they? <laughs> Always have music on, on and uh, reading, a lot of reading. And, and getting back, like I said, into things that I had let go for a while because, yeah, I've moved a couple times too, and uh, I'm here in Nevada. So <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I let a lot of things go because you're, you're busy with life at the time. So, yeah, you sort back of into some of this has been really fun and uh, connecting with people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Rediscovering yourself, your talents, your interests. Yeah, you had a cross country move, Stephanie. Yeah, right. California, then, you know, Pennsylvania, California, and now Nevada. Yep. Right. Well, if thank we you for sharing. Yes, You're thank welcome. you, Stephanie. Well, if we don't have any other questions, I'd like to wrap it up. I want to thank you, Pam, for joining us today. Some great, great material on um, relationships and what to remember as we go through here. Red light, green light, yellow light, um, great way to remember it. And I definitely will remember that going forward because it's not just your spouse, it's with friends and other colleagues too. Um, and wanna thank you for joining us today. And thank you, Kristen, for uh, getting us started and up and running. And if any of you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at info at lift-leadership.com. And thank you, Pam. Any last words to tell? Thank you so much. Yes, just keep learning with Lyft and be proud of the job you're doing in this state of confinement. And uh, thank you so much for today. It was a pleasure for me and I hope it was for you too. Thank you for adding value to us today, Pam.